Hello, welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. Overnight, Phoenix have released their June announcements, and it's a large set from Phoenix this month. However, a good chunk of these models can be discussed all at the same time, as anyone who's seen the list will probably be well aware. Now, before I get started today, I'd like to point out that I don't hate Phoenix models. There seems to be this concept of front round in some people's heads that I've got a real hatred for Phoenix, and that's just not true. In fact, I own 156 models that are branded as Phoenix, so that's probably more than many people have in their collections in total. They are the fourth most popular of the brands in my collection. I've got more Phoenix models than I do Panda models, I've got more Phoenix than I do JC Wings, I've got more Phoenix than I do Dragon. The only brands that I've got more of are Aero Classics, Gemini, and NG. So it simply isn't true that I hate Phoenix models. However, Phoenix are a chalk and cheese company because they have done some things and continue to do some things that do get on my nerves. They've got a selection of good molds and they've got a selection of really poor molds. And they've also got a tendency not to actually update their molds in any way for a long period of time, just keep on releasing obsolete molds with issues which are quite obvious, which really they could fix, but just don't ever seem to care about. So my issue with Phoenix isn't that they produce all bad models, that's simply not true. They produce a lot of good stuff as well. But my issue is that they just seem lazy and not to care that much quite a lot of the time. And that's disappointing. But this month's releases, as I say, it's a big set and they're actually, there's some good stuff in here. It's not all rubbish by any means. So I'm not gonna go through and slate this entire month's releases. That's simply not what this video is about and that's not what Yesterday's Airlines is about. But I am gonna go through and critically analyze the announcements as I always do. And that's what yesterday's airlines is about. And that is hopefully what you guys like to hear. So let's get on and do that. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel. Check out my other channels on Instagram at Yester Airlines and Facebook at Yester Airlines. Obviously, yesterdaysairlines.com, the website, is the core of the material I put out. You've probably heard me say that many times, but if you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, please do. There's lots of good stuff coming up. But let's get on and take a look at this month's Phoenix releases now. Okay, so I'm gonna start this month's set of release announcements with the elephant in the room. Or should I say, the jumbo in the room. <laughs> because of this month's 22 announcements, um, which is actually a very large month for Phoenix, of this month's 22 announcements, nine of them are 747 classics. Obviously, for any other brand, that would be something to really be happy about, but the Phoenix 747 classic moulds are simply awful. Now, ever since the Phoenix have started using these moulds more, there's been quite a lot of chit-chat about this, um, both from myself and my friend at Yankee Victor 400. Check out Jorge's site. He's doing some good stuff there. And, you know, there's been a lot of banter and back and forth discussing, you know, the merits and lack of merits of these 747s. My opinion is obviously that they're horrible, horrible, horrible things that, you know, I can't support and I would rather people didn't buy. <laughs> and Jorge's opinion is that there aren't a lot of alternatives and um, he doesn't want to pay huge money for Big Birds and Aero Classics 747s, which are really hard to find. And yeah, he really wants the models he's getting them. There's valid arguments on both sides there in my opinion though i'm not really budging these models are so bad that i won't touch them um and i'll talk a bit about 
how bad they are again in a second, just in case you're not aware. But let's just touch on what it is that Phoenix are pumping out this month on their 747 Classic Mold. So there's, um, we'll start with the, the Series 100, 200s. There's a United Airlines Battleship Grey Series 200 N161 UA. There is a uh, Delta Airlines 747-100 N9896 in the 70s widget. There's an LL 747 4X AX. B. So there are three Series 100, 200s being put out this month. And yeah, they're not going to be very good. Now, I know that, that last month um, they finally got around to releasing the Air Indias and the British Airways Series 100, 200s for the month before. And from some angles, they don't look awful. And it certainly helps that Phoenix appear to have done a decent job on the printing on these. But it doesn't fundamentally change the basic issues with the mold. If we take a quick look at one of the BA Landors from last month and compare it to the real 747, I'd like to think that it was fairly obvious where the errors lie here. The nose is a bit chunky. The undercarriage is in the wrong place, the nose gear that is. Um, it's got these way too long engine pylons. Um, the wings tend to have this anhedral themselves. It doesn't actually look too bad from this picture, um, but so I won't talk too much about it here. Um, and you can see the tail seam's got that classic Phoenix, way too long. Um, I'm not sure what it really is supposed to be. It's like a rud it's the rudder, but it um, also carries on into the tail. It's just where the attachment to the fuselage is, is very wrong. All these things together, basically, in my opinion, make a mold which is so bad that it's not worth acquiring. But I do admit um, that they've done a decent job here with the Landor scheme on the 747 and they put the copy windows in the right place, which is nice. So it's not a complete abomination, but it is nonetheless not a model that I'm willing to go near. So anyway, that's 747 Classics uh, in the 100, 200 series this month. There are quite a lot more series 400s this month from Phoenix. Um, there's a Northwest Bowling Shoe N667US. There's a United Airlines um, N187UA in the Battleship Grey. There's a Lufthansa in the 90 scheme DABTK. Um, there's a National Airlines Freighter N663CA, which has got Volga Dnepr kind of hybrid scheme going on. And there's a couple of Cathay Pacific uh, cargo BCFs, um, BHKS and BHKJ, it looks like the same livery for both of those. So there's a lot more 400s this month. And to be honest, whereas if you squint, <laughs> you can kind of get away with thinking the Series 100, 200 Phoenix 747 is okay. If you look at the 400, it is, it is just worse. So this model that you're looking at now is a recent release, Amy Zealand ZKSUH. I mean, it just looks awful, <laughs> really bad. Much worse than the 100-200s actually, which is interesting. The nose shape is worse. Interesting, they appear to have got the undercarriage in, in a better position at the front there. Um, but the undercarriage looks too long. Um, even so, the engines are almost touching the ground because the anhedra on the wings is so strong and because the engine pylons are so long. <laughs> it's still got the, the rubbishy tail joint and the 400 mold has an extra issue and that is the classic Phoenix lazy wing to fuselage joint where they don't bear any resemblance to the reality. They just have this big rounded curve where the wing attaches, which doesn't look at all like what is actually happening on the actual 747-400. So in my opinion, the 400s are worse than the 100-200s. These ones truly are uh, awful. And even though there's quite a lot of desirable liveries this month, I mean, I'm sure there are loads of people who want a Delta, for example. They're just gonna be bad models. Um, so hey, buy them if you like, but don't pretend that they're not rubbish because they clearly are. And you know, I've heard all the arguments from people about these models, about why, you know, there are people are getting them, almost apologetic, 
<laughs> hey, don't apologize to me. You want to buy it? Buy it. But uh, they don't really hold a lot of water. I mean, all the models released this month, quite a few of these are actually not particularly hard to find um, from other brands. You don't have to be buying Big Bird and Aero Classic 747s to be getting a decent Northwest bowling shoe. Gemini Jets have released one not too long ago. It's hey, it's even new enough to have rolling gear and it's a super nice model. I own it. I shouldn't think it's too hard to find. I'm pretty sure there's a Dragon version too out there. Um, and if you're looking for Battleship Grey, then I'm pretty sure that there are also older versions of that available. There certainly are lots of Lufthansa 747s around. Again, there are Gemini versions, which look really very nice. Um, and there are Dragon Wing versions, and the Dragon Mold is excellent. If you're looking for a Delta 747, yeah, there's less choice, but even then there's an old Dra uh, Gemini Mold from way back at the start, which is still going to be better than these Phoenixes, even though um, it is a very old model. So... There are other options that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg. Or, hey, you know, there is still potential that there will be releases coming up from other brands. JC Wings have been using their Series 400 mold quite a bit recently. NG are saying that they've got 747s coming. So you never know. You don't have to buy these. There are old and new alternatives um, that are not necessarily Aero Classics and Big Bird. So... That's all I'll say on this. That's enough. That's enough talking about these Phoenix 747s. Obviously, in my opinion, they're all scrap metal. They're just really some of the weakest molds, uh, or the weakest molds in point of scale, some of the weakest models that you're going to get this year. So I have to put these in scrap metal. Um, they're really bad. Otherwise, what's that category for? If you can't put these in there, then why do I have a category of scrap metal? They're really bad, bad models. Okay, moving on. Away from that, um, and we'll stick with Boeing and we'll come up uh, with the Airbus's layer, which is um, obviously a different order to usual. We've got next up uh, a couple of 737-800s. The first one is Solar Seed Air, which is that rather kind of not very interesting Japanese airline. I've discussed Solar Seed Air before because this model, JA803X, um, which has Pokemon all over it, I think it's Executor. Can't remember anyway that's the pokemon like a weird tree um this has been announced by jc wing so i discussed this a few months ago um i'm not a big fan of the the phoenix uh, sorry yeah the phoenix 737-800 either to be honest they've been doing better recently though i admit i mean if you look at some of the pictures of one of the recent air china versions the cockpit is in a better position but it doesn't really fundamentally make the mold dramatically better i do own some i do own some but from years ago now i wouldn't buy new phoenix 737 800s not when there are so much better molds around for me the nose isn't the right shape the undercarriage is always a struggle with phoenix 737s the engines are too small basically across the board really the mold isn't correct and they quite often do get the cockpit in the wrong place so for me not a great mold saucy not an interesting airline and it's already been announced by JC, though obviously not released. So I'm going to gas guzzle this one. Just not particularly good. The next up is um, its goal, or at least it's the second Mercado Libra freighter um, that Gol have um, got in service. There was one of these released by NG. Um, not that long ago, but in a slightly different scheme, it was yellow all over, and this one's got a blue front to it, so it is different. This one is PSGFD. Everything I've said about the mold still stands. I, I can't do anything more, really, than also gas guzzle this one. It's just it's not very exciting, and at the same time, the mold's rubbish, and it really would surprise me if NG put this out. I, I mean, I wouldn't particularly want it anyway so it wouldn't be a, mold, a release that I'd be excited by but it wouldn't surprise me if NG did release it in, in a few months I just doesn't don't see the need to be spending your money on a Phoenix version myself so yeah they're not great now things do improve things do improve in this set of releases I promise <laughs> next up we've got another 747 but this one's a 7478 and it is important to distinguish that Phoenix 7478s from the Phoenix 747 Classics because the 8s mold is a lot better. Um, 
Personally, I don't think it's as good as the JC Wings Gemini 7478. And the main issues that I have relate again to that long tail seam and also the kind of slightly lazy wing join that I talked about for their Series 400, which doesn't look too much like the real thing. But overall, it's a decent mold, um, which is a mold that I'd be more than happy to have in my collection. I actually don't think I own any, but there are so few 7478Is to buy um, that that's not too surprising. They don't really fit my criteria. This month's release is in the Qatar Amiri Flight colors. So yeah, I just love Qatar. But <laughs> for those who like government um, related releases, then there's been quite a few coming recently, hasn't there? Because obviously JC just announced several too. And hey, I'm sure this will be a perfectly decent model. So I'm gonna put this one up into High Flyer. It's the first release this month, which I think really has merit. Next up, back to another 737, but this time it's a Max. It is a Virgin Australia. It is VH8IA. And yeah. I'm not an enormous fan of the, the Phoenix Max either, to be honest. Partly because they never seem to be able to fit the undercarriage properly to make it look like a Max. It usually looks like uh, a 737 Next Generation. The mold is okay, but it isn't certainly winning any awards. And it's definitely inferior to the JC Gemini mold and the NG Models mold. So it is maybe marginally better than the Aero Classics version, but it's not a great mold. This has been announced by NG Models already. I really don't understand anyone buying this when you can buy the NG version. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna put this one in Workhorse. You know, it's not a complete disaster of a model. The mold is okay-ish, but it's one that I personally avoid. But there's good alternatives. I don't really see why you would be spending your money on a Phoenix Max myself. Okay, we've got two more Boeings to discuss. And it is interesting that as you go through this list, you know, at least the way I've organized the release list, things get more interesting the further away um, from Boeing that you get. Next up is another Indian release and there's been quite a lot of Indian releases recently this one is the Indigo 73 uh, sorry 777-300ER TC LKD it's the same aircraft that's been announced by JC Wings but of course again JC haven't got a release date whereas you know this Phoenix version will be out reasonably soon the JC 777 much better than the Phoenix version but the Phoenix version still decent enough it's an old mold hasn't really been improved that much but it's still a decent mold just gotta pay attention to where they put in the cockpit but they've been okay recently so i actually think this is a decent release from phoenix it's going to get out in a reasonable time scale it will look nice and the livery is good the mold's okay yeah for me this one is is again just enough to slip up there into high flyer i think that this one is a good release, a worthwhile release, and it's a shame that JC aren't gonna get theirs out sooner because I would prefer the JC version if I were buying it, but at the same time, this one will be perfectly nice. So high flyer for me. And we end this month's Boeings from Phoenix with another Pokemon jet. <sighs> So, so many Pokemon jets. Japan has got like some kind of disease. This one is another all Nippon. It is JA894A, a 7879. It's super colorful. It's got Pikachu being held up by balloons. It's got a load of other Pokemon all over it. Actually, they're using the aircraft quite well if you can stomach this many Pokemon, which I'm struggling to, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I can see this is going to get released by everyone else too. And therefore, you've got to think about the mold again. And the Phoenix 
787 is a really old mold. It came out before the 787 even flew. So when you're comparing it to the new Aviation 400 mold, the JC mold, the NG mold, you know, it's lacking by quite a large margin, um, especially the wing curvature on the ground. So yeah, it's, it's nothing special at all for me. Um, and I'm gonna put this one down to Workhorse, which is probably where all Phoenix 787s live. It's not so bad that I feel that it should be gas guzzled, but it's not particularly good either. And certainly when there's so much competition, Phoenix really need to be doing better with their 787s. Okay, so that is the Boeing half of this month's announcements. So we're gonna move over in part two to the Airbus and other manufacturers side of the releases. Stay tuned. So into the Airbuses and the first pair are Lufthansa A321neos, DAIEQ, the 600th Airbus aircraft. Presumably the 600 Airbus aircraft delivered to Lufthansa and DAIEP. Yeah, this is another example of Phoenix being lazy. Their A321 mold has never been particularly good. It's always looked a bit TU204 y. And then when they've produced the Neo version, they haven't gone back and re engineered the mold. So they've just stuck new engines on it. It's got the wrong wing, which has always been the biggest annoyance for me because A321s have double slotted flaps and therefore you get a lot more flap track fairings at the back of the wing. Whereas Phoenix just slapped on the single slotted flap wing of an A320 onto their A321. So these are both, you know, you know, what, what can I say? They're both gonna be mediocre models. The mold is poor. Everyone else is gonna release these anyway, let's be honest. Lufthansa gets so many releases that I can't see Panda or Gemini or NG putting out these models at some point in the future. So they're not going to be exclusive to Phoenix for very long and the mold isn't very good. So yet, yet again, I mean, these are crying out to be put into a category which isn't showing them in a good light. They're, they're gas guzzlers. I don't really, really hate the Lufthansa A321, but at the same time, it's not a mold that should be being made in 2023. Simple as that, really kind of poor and lazy, just like their 787, just like their 747s. You know, Phoenix just don't seem to care. However, we've got five models left to discuss in this video. And for all of my bitching thus far, these five actually all look potentially pretty good. So there are good models to be found with Phoenix and there are good releases. And they do seem to be listening to some collectors as well, which is nice, though not English speaking ones. Um, the first model up here is South American, Czech, Boliviana de Aviation. It's an A330 200 CP3209. And I do really like the Phoenix A330 mold. It is true, their 330 200s have got horizontal stabs, which are too large. <laughs> and again, they're just too lazy to get it right and change them over for the ones on their Series 300. But nonetheless, overall the mold's decent. This livery for Boliviana is actually really nice and you don't get many models from Bolivia. So it's hitting all the right marks. No one else is likely to be producing this soon. It's a really good choice. And for me, all of those things together elevate this one up into supersonic. It should be a super nice model. Next up, we've got a pair of A340s. And again, because the A330 mold is good, the A340 mold is also. The first one is Swiss HBJMI. And this model would be getting a higher score than I'm going to give it if they had not already made it previously. So it is not the first um, Swiss A340 in the scale. In fact, there have been quite a surprising number, though a lot of them have been on Dragon molds. But Phoenix have made... Um, well, this is actually the fourth, but this is only the second 
using this scheme and this mold. So they've made one before, they made JMK and they made that in 2013, so like quite a long time ago. So completely understandable that they get a remake. But there have also been versions from Panda and Aero Classics. And those things together mean that I'm gonna put this one into Workhorse. The other A340 is a Series 300, and this one is looking really good. It is Egypt Air, and you've got to say that it is and should be a super nice aircraft. Now, the aircraft reg is actually not Egyptian, which is interesting. It is registered A4 zero L E so it is not Egyptian registered which is interesting but it was originally delivered to Gulf Air and then leased directly to um, Egypt Air in 1995 and it operated with them for a couple of years wearing this classic um, Egypt Air scheme so it's actually gonna look really really nice. Egypt Air did operate um, three other A340s but they were all Series 200s and they were delivered later and I think they only wore the, the not quite as exciting blue tail scheme which has been made by Dragon before but nobody's made this one. Um, it's gonna look really really nice. It's a really classy scheme with Horus on the tail and great cheat line, great mould, Great choice for a release again. And again, I believe that this one was suggested to Phoenix by a friend of mine, and, and they listened, which is really nice. So it's not that they're completely unable to listen to people. So for me, this one is, again, hitting top spot. I'm gonna put this one up in to Supersonic. So that's actually two Supersonics this month for Phoenix from this release set which isn't bad going for a Phoenix monthly announcement. But we've still got two models left, and neither of those Airbus or Boeing, and that usually bows well. First up, we've got a Delta MD-11 in the widget scheme, NA06DE, and Phoenix have been releasing more American material recently, whereas previously they almost never released American stuff. So that in itself is interesting. Widget always sells well, and I'm sure this one will too. It's not the first time, obviously, that there has been a widget MD-11, but it is the first time in a long, long time that there has been, because it's been over 20 years since the last one, which was made by JetX on the Dragon Mold. There's also been a Gemini um, release made too, uh, right at the back of the beginning of 400 scale production. I own that model. And the interesting thing about it is it's exactly the same mold as this one um, is going to be. So this is very much going to be an updated version. It's the same mold that Phoenix use. They use the old Gemini mold. But the difference is that they've updated it with their own landing gear. And that's good and bad. If you look at some of the recent versions, they've looked okay. Like, for example, this Lufthansa cargo version looks pretty decent. But I would argue that um, the undercarriage is a little long on their MD-11s. But not so long that it's a dramatic problem with them. But as you can see, the mould is okay, but still it's quite old-fashioned. The engine pylons are a bit long. It's got a seam. Um, the area around the number two engine is you know, okay, but not grey. You know, it, it's okay, not spectacular. I actually probably prefer the updated Gemini JC version over this one. But this one will be good, and... I'm sure this one will sell super well. And for me, this one is good enough to be high flyer. And that leaves one more model to discuss. That is a Tupolev and actually a Russian one, which is a novelty because you don't get too many Russian Tupolevs. I've been reasonably vocal in saying that NG have just not been using their T154 mold enough. So it's a little bit ironic that Phoenix have started using theirs I've just seen pictures of their El Coriu release, which came out, I think, just last month, and it looks okay. Obviously, the mold can't hold a candle to um, the NG version, but 
like a lot of Phoenix molds, you have to kind of accept to a degree that they're old. And even though, yeah, they've got rolling gear and aerials maybe, they're still pretty ordinary. This T154, yeah, it's not, it's not dreadful. It's not dreadful. But it's obviously not spectacular either. Um, and looks a bit toy-like in comparison to the NG. But that's not enough to stop me from giving it a decent rating. This release is Crassair um, RA85694. I like the Crassair scheme. It was an important Russian airline in the early 2000s. And this is a model which, again, I think is requested by a friend of mine and a model which, yeah, I'd be quite interested in getting and may well do. So for me, I can kind of overlook some of the mediocrity of the mold. And yeah, I think that I'm gonna high fly this one as well. So that's two high flyers and two supersonics out of the last five announcements in this set, which makes the month look a lot better than it did at the beginning. So that's it for this month's Phoenix announcements. It's a long list, but a lot of rubbish on there. But there's still some gems to be found. I'm sure lots of you guys will be out there buying those 747s, hey, and it's entirely up to you whether you do, but don't tell me they're good models. <laughs> and in terms of the rest of it, it's the usual kind of up. Yeah, good ATP 30s, ATP 40s, NG 11s, 154s. Bad 737s, A321s, and middling 787s, and, you know, a few other bits and bobs. It's an okay month. And actually a month where I might actually, for the first time, get two or three models from Phoenix. First time in a long time. But at the same time, obviously, it's weighed down somewhat by the jumbos. Anyway, guys, that's my view on things. Hope you find something of interest in this month's set from Phoenix. And I'll see you next time for the next one of these release announcement ranking vids. Cheers for watching.